What's going on guys? Owners Forum coming at you guys today again with another video. And today I'm going to be talking about MCDC Dan Campbell. Motor City Dan Campbell, Detroit Lions, new head coach. And you know what? Media needs to start leaving this man alone. Um, he, like I said, this guy is our new head coach in Detroit. His introductory press conference was legendary. Um, it will never be forgotten. Kneecap biting, kick you in the face, all that jazz. Doing what he does. Very, very boisterous, very colorful. Um, says what's on his mind. Is, is a man's man, um, a player's coach. You just love the guy. We had a guy here at Bat Patricia who was a stiff, who was an absolute stiff, and the media roasted this guy for being a stiff. He, he was a guy that would literally sit on the sidelines with his, with his arms crossed, head to the side, and just miserable. Disengaged with his players, never communicating with anybody, coaches, players, and, ne and you never really seen it. It was very rare. Especially when they were losing, you know what I mean? And we lost a lot under uh, uh, Matt Patricia. If you ever seen Dan Campbell coach, and I do remember him coaching in Miami. I do remember seeing him in um, New Orleans as, as, the, as the tight ends coach, assistant head coach of Sean Payton as well. The man is engaged. He is with his guys. He's sweating profusely. He's involved. He's all about football and all about his players. Now, he gets named the Grand Marshal for the Detroit Grand Prix. And what does this guy do too? He comes out and he comes out in a press conference with, with a racing helmet and he wore it for a matter of 10 to 15 seconds, whatever he did. He has fun. It's May in June. Uh, he was doing this before that too. Just the way he talks, the man wanted an actual lion on a real live lion on the sidelines um he talked about it with sheila ford i think a lot of it was in jest but who knows with him um, i don't think you could really have an actual lion Peta got involved in that too as well um but he brought it up to sheila he wanted to walk around with this thing <laughs> with the chain with the chain at practice through the hallways of ford field and all the offices whatever um they reside and uh, it's it's refreshing. It's actually refreshing to just to hear stuff like this from a from a head coach, um, especially from what we just came from. We came from nothing but this guy was uh, Patricia was an arrogant, um, just not a nice guy overall. Extremely arrogant, was not nice, um, bad to the media. You know, even took shots at the media about. Sitting up about how about how one reporter was sitting down, uh, you're slouching like like that's something your dad does, man. Like, like like you know what I mean? Like that's just absolutely ridiculous. He was just he just wasn't a just didn't seem like an overall. He's one of those awkward awkward people that you can't really approach and talk to. That's what Patricia seemed like to me. Um, smartest guy in the room, you know what I mean? Everything was he. You would ask him a question, he'd, he'd probably ask you a question back. You know what I mean? Asking why you asked this question in this certain way. He just wasn't. Uh, it just wasn't a, a straightforward guy. He just didn't. He just. He was too complex, man. He was. He was. He, he was in his own head too much. But Dan Campbell, you get. You get carefree. You get like I said. You get a player's coach. You get a guy that cares. Yes, he's not the X and O type of guy that you want, um, but he has surrounded himself with a great, great staff. Now. You got people like Colin Cowherd, Joy Taylor, and other media talking heads bashing the animal like crazy. He's getting he's he's getting his name dragged through the mud right now. Um, even our own Detroit uh, sports talk radio host of ninety seven point one, Mike Valente, is getting in on the action. Um, he hasn't really had anything negative to say about Detroit since Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have came here. So you know, he he had to get his uh, his big mouth involved in it and say. Um, he had to call him a cartoon and act. He had to say that he was, you know, people calling him a clown and a doofus and a Neanderthal. The list goes on and on with um, the name calling that they're actually calling Dan Campbell. It's actually kind of disturbing. But then you have Brad Holmes, our GM, 
who's backing up, who finally came out and said, enough is enough. Uh, I've had enough of, uh, of the media bashing on Dan Campbell. He, he, is a, he is an elite person. He has elite traits. Um, he's not calling him an elite coach or anything like that, but he said everything about him besides coaching so far has been elite. He's um, elite personality. He, he's The way he communicates with, with, with people in general, his personality in general, that, that too. Just everything about him is, um, is a bonus. It is, he's a very approachable human being. You can tell by, by, by listening to the man talk. It's just, it, it, it's, it's a refreshing um, thing to see and hear. Um, media constantly questioning this guy's actions. Saying that Bill Walsh wouldn't do this. Uh, Bill Belichick wouldn't do that. Andy Reid. You know what? He's not trying to be Bill Walsh. He's not trying to be Bill Belichick or Andy Reid. We just had a guy here that was trying to be Bill Belichick. And how did that go? How did that Patriot way go, guys? How did it go? It was an absolute failure in Detroit. We failed. Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn failed this organization hugely. Patricia sent this organization back three, four years. He didn't Millen. He didn't. He didn't Matt Millen this organization. Millen did a way worse job as a GM, and Bob Quinn too, as, as well. You know what I mean? Um, Millen put this organization back 10 years, literally. He was, he was here, he was here eight or nine. So he probably set it back 15 years, I would actually say. Not even lying, but 15 years he set this organization back. Then it got better. You know, they hired Mayu. You know, they started getting guys coming in, do, doing better jobs, not great jobs, but doing way better jobs than Matt Millen ever did. Um, and, and we've had coaches along the way that have just been, you know, like, people have talked about, you know, Marty Morningweg, uh, Mariucci. Um, Mariucci would just totally ref deflect everything. Mariucci. Um, uh, what was his name? <laughs> Morningweg. Jump on a Harley. You know what I mean? Everyone kind of did their own little thing. Everyone, everyone kind of did their own little thing. Um, it was different, you know? And then now we have a... And then all the way up to Patricia, who was just not just not a personable guy. He just was one of those awkward, awkward geniuses that you can't really, you know, apparently a genius, that you can't, that you have trouble communicating with. You know what I mean? Um, in comes in Dan Campbell, and it, it's it's refreshing. It's new. You know what I mean? It, it, it's not the same old tired act. It's it's something positive. It's something positive. Is this, is this guy going to be the next Vince Lombardi? I don't know. Nobody really knows that, man. We don't know. But I think it's it's refreshing to see and, and it's refreshing to hear. You know, this is a guy who played in the NFL for 11 years as a as a blocking tight end. Okay, he catch some passes, but that wasn't really his game. His game was to knock your junk into the dirt. That was that was his game, and he was well respected, well liked, even when even during his playing days. Been to a been to a Super Bowl, never won one. I think he went to one with the Giants. Uh, against the Ravens, I believe. Or did they win? Or did he win a Super Bowl? I don't remember, but I know. I think he played in one for sure. Um, then he became, an after his football career, he became an interim head coach at Miami. Um, first started off as, a, as an intern. Then he got bumped up to assistant coach, then promoted to tight ends coach. Then he was so well-liked in 2015... He replaced Joe Philbin, a tight ends coach at that point. You know, they started one and three. He jumps in. Campbell's Dolphins went five and seven. So I think they went six and 11 that year or, or six and six and 10. Sorry, six and 10 that year. He never got the job. You don't really see too many interim head coaches get the job, but he was very well respected, very coached, very good, looked good doing it. That he got a call from in 2016 from Sean Payton. Sean Payton is the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Um, called him, brought him in, made him their tight ends coach and assistant head coach to Payton. So he's got the experience. He has seen a ton of football, good and bad. He was part of that 0 16 in Detroit. So he knows all about the losing and he thinks he can turn this around. He's quirky, he's fun, uh, he's humorous, 
he, he just, he's just the type of guy that you can sit there and have a beer with and probably talk football with all night, man, and get along with the man totally. You couldn't do that with, with Matt Patricia. There's no way. There just was no way. Um, he knows his football. He's a player's coach. You just got to give this man a chance. Like, I'm not saying this guy is going to be the next Vince Lombardi or, or Bill Belichick. We don't know. You know what I mean? That that's Those are high expectations anyways. But we have yet to see this man even coach on the field. We've seen some of his acts. I love what he's doing. I love that he brings levity to the situation. You know? Um, he takes full responsibility for everything. He says it doesn't bother him. Um, but, you know, at being a human being... I guarantee you it maybe irks him a little bit, but he's not going to show that. It, it irks me because nobody will give this team a chance, and I kind of get that in a way because we are the Detroit Lions, and you know we, we don't get well respected, but we have to earn it. We have to earn it. So I get it a little bit with the criticism, but I think it's a little bit overboard. You got to leave this man alone, and I'll leave you with this, and I'll leave you with this. It's a quote. We've all heard it. Here's what I do know is that this team is going to take an identity of this city, all right? And this city has been down, and it's found a way to get up. It's found a way to overcome adversity, all right? So this team is going to be built on, we're going to kick you in the teeth, all right? And when you punch us back, we're going to smile at you. And when you knock us down, we're going to get up. And on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap, all right? And we're going to stand up, and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down, all right? And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another honk out of, out of you. Before, before long, we're going to be the last one standing, all right? That's going to be the mentality. That's my coach. That's what I want to hear. Motor City Dan Campbell, our Detroit Lions head coach, the man. Take us to the promised land, bro. It's going to take a bit, but I like the direction we're going so far. Leave this man alone, man. Let him coach. Boom.